What is going on guys? Wiser here coming to you with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. This was our potluck spin. We ended up uh, landing a match with Tiger Droppings, actually the TD war. Uh, we have never matched these guys before and at first it looked like we were doing insanely well and we just kind of let things get away from us. Percentage victory goes to TD war. Really nice job guys. Way to stick it out. Actually, if you look at, look at the last half hour of this war. Look at all these attacks. I mean, 32 minutes left, right? Uh, they nail a tree star on Zerds. Uh, Bill Cosby comes right back, cleans up, uh, does a bully attack on 21. Oh my God, that base 21. We'll talk about that in one second here. Um, you know, so they got another tree star on Nina. Uh, we ended up getting one right back on number 15 with Ice. Uh, they had a fail on Dirty. Then Dirty got a three star, right? And it was just back and forth. South Fence got one. I thought we were looking in great position. They ended up getting a two on Salty, so they didn't get the three star there. And we were like, yeah, looking pretty good. Used a few attacks. Fail, 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 fail. And nails the extra star on DI to come away with this percentage win. Now, um, we kind of let this get away from us, like I said. We had this base 21. Let's go ahead and check it out. I will show you this base in a second. The most harmless looking base, go defenses, nine attacks, and we ended up using two bullies. We had a fail bully attack on this. No offense whatsoever to the guy who failed the bully, because it happens. I failed the bully in Invicta a few wars ago, and it sucks. You're like, oh my god, because those are supposed to be given attacks. And think about it, if we had nailed that bully and not had to use Ice's, um, was it Ice who cleaned it up, I think? Or sorry, Bill Cosby. Um, if we did not have to use that other Town Hall 10 attack there, there's a good chance we could have at least got better percentage somewhere else, if not got another star and not been in the position we were in. But again, it's the whole, the, it's the whole war, right? Um, it happens. What are you going to do? Uh, so great victory to TD war. One of those ones that came down right to the end and you know, just, just what we live for in this, uh, in the war community, right? Those, those kind of wars just at the end, the last half hour was just insane back and forth. So, uh, yeah, good win TD war. Uh, hopefully we can match up again sometime cause, uh, clearly it was a very, very close one. Um, I'm just going to hop right into some replays here. Start off with Chad Fowler bringing this, uh, Go, uh, go la lobe, hobo, or whatever the hell you want to call it, I forget what you guys call it, but, uh, basically the idea here is a shattered entry, you're gonna bring, uh, bowlers in the clan castle, he is only opting for one lava hound, which I thought was kind of interesting, so that means what he wants is to work everything into these compartments here, you're gonna drop a jump spell, uh, right over here and just let the bowlers in, because if you, if you can get the bowlers standing right around this sort of core, they have access to all four of these air defense, right? They're going to end up getting the queen. Uh, so you kind of see how this is playing out now. Funnel gets created. Heroes go on in. Bowler's in behind. They do kind of stray a touch, but because of that army camp being down, they're going to go back up and into the base. Beautiful. Poison goes down. Take care of those CC troops. Here comes that first rage. Going to get a big value on that. <clears throat> Bowler's just got to work their way in, right? We got two air defense down now. Defensive Queen is about to step up here and get taken down as well. Da, da, da. All four air defenses are almost down. <laughs> Sorry. Nah. Come on, Bowler. Hit it. <laughs> See, it's very strange because that air defense is only one space away from the wall. Finally, the Bowler steps up. I think it was aiming at the Queen, to be honest. Uh, but anyways, all four air defenses down, right? So one Lava Hound is more than enough. And in fact, I don't think that um he even necessarily needed a lava and you want to bring one just in case um right in case that bowler did not get the air defense would have been really handy to have uh have that lava hound right so you, you want to bring it as a safety net but uh, as you can see he didn't even really need it right archers on those corner uh, builders huts really good planning nice job chad fowler that's tree in the bag boom mm -mm -mm. So, Jamie has been crushing it. Come on. What are they going to start to call me right when I sit down to do a recap? <clears throat> uh, Jamie 
like I was saying, has absolutely been killing this. We call this the, uh, I think it's the blue Veiler attack. Now, the idea here, seven healers she's going to bring. So four of them are going on this queen. She's going to go ahead and create one side of the funnel with the queen walk or queen charge, whatever you want to call it. No wall breakers here. So we got max Valks in the CC. We got 12 Valks she's bringing as well. Plus, or sorry, bowlers in the CC, my bad, with uh, 12 Valkyries, uh, three more healers. So uh, in one minute, you're going to see on the other side of all of this, uh, she's going to go ahead and drop the bowlers out of her CC. There they go with three more healers. And they're just going to get big value, kind of step into this area. They're going to end up getting that air defense, I believe, at the same time so they can continue on walking around. Drops the Valkyries right on the wall. Valks are going to do all the work. 12 Valks is a huge value now. One thing about this attack, there's no back end units, right? It's all Valks, Bowlers, and Healers. So see these Healers kind of, it would have been nice for the Healers, to three, at least three of those Healers to stay on the Bowlers out here so they could survive and continue up around this base. But seven Healers locking on to Valks and a King smashing through this core with a heal spell. There is nothing that this base can hand those Valks and King right like i mean they're they're not going anywhere right like all these heal spells like there's just no chance whatsoever of her losing losing uh too much of her her army right like Valks oh, just shredding up the base untouched under the heels finally the heal spells pit her out so they do start taking some damage on this back side here um but once they break through this wall Bam, but bam, they're going to work their way up to that last arch tower. King is nicely working up here. Queen, of course, is uh, using a healer <laughs> on herself to help keep her healed while she works that wall. But the thing about this attack is it leaves a lot of room for error. Just because it's a very smash and grab technique of killing the base, you just create a funnel, get a huge amount of Valks into the base, and keep them healed. And they're, you're going to have big success. I think Jamie's had three six-packs in a war using, um, in, in a range wars, using this very strat, basically the exact same army comp. A lot of it is just studying your entry, making sure you got a nice funnel, making sure that your uh, bowlers, unfortunately, they didn't quite work out because the healers locked on to the uh, kill squad here. But making sure your bowlers are going to be safe and work their way around the base. Very, very, very... Um, few uh sorry a, a lot of room for error we'll just say in these attacks uh you know had the basically a swag queen ability there valks are going to work through the rest of this base finish it off for a tree star in the bag beautiful job jamie <clears throat> so three heals one rage bowlers in the cc with 12 valks and seven healers that's it right two hogs just uh, i think used for the lure and that is that all right, so have quite a bit of 10 on 10 action here. Let's check out Cosby's hit on this uh, newer Town Hall 10, level one Infernos, right? So this mass minor strat is getting a lot of attention right now. I'm a firm believer that miners and bowlers still need some tweaks. Um, I like them being powerful. I like the fact that there's a lot of options at 10. There's a lot of options at nine, especially for what you bring in your CC, but they just need slight tweaks a lot lot of cool ideas i was um you know i, I chimed in on uh, ash just did um a video about uh sort of the balance issues in the game right now and obviously the main concern of these bowlers and healer or bowlers and miners also the healers though i think healers need to be more fragile i think they need to just die easier the fact that a healer takes five shots from air defense is absolutely ridiculous um so I think healers need to just be more fragile. I think someone had a cool idea of having a whole brand new defense, something like a uh, a witch tower that produces skeletons. I know this was talked to, this has been talked about before, but I think if you had a defense that produced skeletons to distract miners and distract bowlers and keep miners above ground, um, to keep bowlers kind of standing in one spot, trying to kill a bunch of skeletons, that can have a huge impact on, you know, you might not even necessarily need to nerf anything about the units if you gave that, that defense. So I thought that was a really cool idea. I've just seen a lot of cool things around, you know, something about maybe have miners not go underground if the next building is within a certain range. I um, think that was a cool idea too. It'll keep them above ground, make them a little more fragile. Um, so, you know, a lot of ideas being thrown around. I hope Supercell uh, reacts and does something cool for us because I don't want I don't want miners and bowlers to be like witches. I don't want them to just be non-existent. I like the way the game is going. I just just hope they hope they listen and uh, work on some of these tweaks. But as you can see, right, Cosby went in. The whole goal was pull the CC out, try and get an Inferno Tower and 
roll your face over the screen from left to right and drop your miners and <laughs> throw some heal spells down on them, right? He, he dropped a nice heal on the bombs, dropped a nice heal uh, down on these bombs down here, kept them going, comes away with the tree in the bag. Nice job, my friend. So a couple different Town Hall 10 attacks as well. This is what I like. There is some diversity now with Town Hall uh, 10. I do think air needs as well a bit of an upgrade. Um, air is just not, I mean, other than max drags, which to me, if at least from what I see from our guys, is if they have expos set to air, um, it's not fully viable, but max drags are really the only sort of air strat that you could possibly use 10 versus 10. Um, you know, the Lalos are not there. The La Matt Newmax, Lava Hound, isn't really getting used in my opinion, at least in the 10 versus 10 game. Definitely not in the Town Hall 11 game. So um, just trying to continue to make all the attacks diverse, have some attack options, but at the same time not make them so ridiculous that you can't defend them. Um, it's it's a tough game. I get it. Uh, very tough, right? So Ice is going to go in here. Nice funnel. Get that queen charge raid in. Raid spell goes down. Takes care of that defensive queen. Takes care of a bunch of defenses. Sends in a few hogs. Going to go ahead and lure out that clan castle. Out comes a baby drag. Couple Valkyries and wizard. <clears throat> Another rage goes down. Keep that queen going. Kills that uh, king just in time. Poison down. Taking care of the CC troops. She is going to be A-OK -okay and live through that stuff. Might have to burn the ability. There it goes. But her job's done, right? Huge piece of the base has been taken out. Going to go ahead and drop a golem down here. Funnel's already being created from this uh, sort of um, 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock location. Valks are going to smash on through this wall. Doesn't bring any, or maybe had a wall. No, he used wall breakers up there. So they just smash through the wall. Jump spells down. Going to let them work through this base. Going to take care of that level 1 Inferno Tower very, very, very quickly on that side. Down it goes. Valves continue on working through the base into that Town Hall compartment now. Going to get a lot of value under that rage there. Look how quickly that Town Hall went down. Fast that Expo went down. Bam, bam, bam. The whole apartment's clear. He sent in a CC of miners as well from the 6 o'clock here to kind of work basically straight up to 3 o'clock, clearing all the trash on the way. Valks are working on that three o'clock apartment. King and <laughs> King goes right back into that long alleyway that led up right up to that next inferno tower, right to the next jump. Jump's gonna let everything through. He's got a bunch of Valkyrie still moving in. Oh wait, and we still got that queen there with the healers on her. King ability hasn't even been touched yet, and there is nothing left of this base. Tree in the bag for the Iceman. Nice job, buddy. Very cool attack. Beauty. And PJ going in on base 14 here. More level 1 Inferno Towers, but another mass minor attack. Same idea as we saw with Bill Cosby's attack. Um, we're going to go ahead and send in a golem from the 9 o'clock section. Get a funnel created. We're going to drop our heroes with that golem. Now, the goal with that is to pull the CC and take care of an Inferno Tower. If you can do that, you're leaving a mass miner in very, very good position. So you're going to see this all pan out. Queen kind of steps in. King goes in. <clears throat> Defensive Queen's going to lock on in one moment. Use that jump spell right over top that Inferno Tower. Out comes the Clan Castle. Poison down instantly. Job on that. Bunch of minis and some loons. Down go the minis, down go the loons, down goes that Inferno Tower, and the King's even going to get the Defensive Queen out of the deal. Down she goes. <clears throat> Start working on that defensive king. I don't know if he finishes off. No, he doesn't. Uh, Queen's got that expo locked onto her, so she's going to have to pop that ability in one moment. I think she... Oh, no, his king even finishes off the king there. Just in time. Sliver of health on his king. Take down that clan castle. But as you can see, Miner's now rolled rolled from basically, you know, from the 10 to 2 location. They're going to start working down through this base in a clockwise rotation. Still has his heroes in there doing work. They got great value out of that. And boom, heal spell, you know, DGB. Like, to me, that's that's the problem right there. Let's pause that right there. I wish I could rewind. He had every miner in this compartment. The DGB got set off simultaneously, which for hogs, those hogs would be toast. You could have a thousand hogs standing in that compartment. They would all be dead right now. However, miners under the heal survive it. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I, think, I think stuff like that should be addressed because if, for example, um, miners did not survive that, you would have to be a little more tactful in how you attack the base. You could still do these attacks. They would not be impossible. You would just have to 
address double giant bombs properly. You wouldn't just be able to spam in, drop a heal, and yeah, come away with the tree star. But PJ just absolutely ripping through this base. Still has a heal in the bag here. Just needs to let his miners work their way around. They do a bit of a split here, which is sort of a good thing. You don't want them to split too much, though. Otherwise, they're going to pitter out. Very similar to Hogs, but it's just got way too many miners for only a few point defenses to go. See, another DGB. He does lose a couple, but if there's a heal down, they're not going to die. They don't die automatically to... Uh, to DGBs like that, and I think that is a that is a bit of an issue as well. Um, you know, maybe miners taking you know bowlers will die to a DGB, but miners don't. And I think I think that is a huge piece of why this strat is so powerful. Tree in the bag for PJ. Um, all right, let's finish this off with Zerzy boy. What would a ten versus ten sort of recap be without a mass bowler? <laughs> So this is a very standard attack. You guys have seen this one a lot. We're going to go ahead and drop a couple healers on a few bowlers on one side, a couple healers on a few bowlers on the other side. We're going to create that funnel. We're going to send everything else up the middle and let everything work through this base. Now, these very, very compact uh, base designs at Town Hall 10, I don't think are a good idea anymore. Me and Kat are going to start working on some Town Hall 10 concepts of things uh, because this sort of ends up being a problem. Now, the way the bowlers wrote, they go. They end up not going the way Zerds wanted to. I don't believe. Um, they start pathing downwards, and everything goes actually out of the base and around. Then you want everything to move into the core here. Um, where is that next jump that he used? It's gotta be in there. Yeah, the jump's right in there. But you see, they bust through the walls there. Maybe if he pushed the jump, they would have went up. But you can see everything moving now to the outside. Uh, it's okay. Still got healers on him. He's got a crap ton of bowlers still working through the base. Got his uh, king and queen ability still intact. So they're going to continue to work their way around here. They end up busting out of this wall. Just slowly kind of counterclockwise around the base here. Right? No danger whatsoever. No danger being that Inferno Tower. The healers locked onto that king are keeping him going. Keeping him tanking for those bowlers and the queen. They're going to continue to walk behind. Just clean up all those buildings as they walk past those compartments. <clears throat> really the healers locking onto the king here was the savior of the raid because they are just letting this king stay out front take care of all this business bam 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 bowlers are going to step in take care of that air defense here one sec down it goes a couple trash buildings they're going to start bursting their way into this uh this compartment now <laughs> it just worked out perfectly sometimes that's the way the attacks go right finish off that last defense there there's only this small uh, amount of uh, stuff left in this uh, this core here right it is an inferno tower so it is a bit of concern but that many bowlers and a queen ability still intact boom unfortunately dgb smacks down most of those bowlers but there's just too much of this army left queen ability in fact basically a swag queen ability down goes that inferno tower now queen just got to finish off those skellies finish off the base and it's tree in the bag for zergy job my friend beautiful all right so thanks for the war td like i said uh like i was saying at the beginning i think we kind of let this one get away from us uh we were in pretty good position see all our town hall tens did um sorry very well except for number four there we got those two stars in there um you know a couple really nice bullies in there from our town hall 11s uh knocking down those town hall tens right the top town hall tens and then having so another one there and then having one two three and four ten versus ten tree stars like that that's a really good performance up top so unfortunately this base is the one uh we really struggled with and i know people like to show that the fact that we use nine attacks on this base sucks i mean this base to me is nothing special um it's symmetrical first of all but i don't know why we had such a problem with it i was actually the very first hit i did the fresh hit on it um and I was really disappointed I didn't get it because to me it, it looks like a very easy base. However, um, I think if uh, memory serves me correct, he had three Teslas behind this expo in this sort of two o'clock expo compartment. Um, he definitely had a bomb in here somewhere as well. I'm trying to remember where most of the traps were, but just a crazy sort of style base that. I guess we're not used to attacking, um, you know, very, very difficult funnel to make on the queen side. Like, look how unprotected this queen is. Um, I thought I'm like, with the CC being right there, like maybe just a hero swap, pull out the CC. Like, 
like I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know why we struggle with this one so much. I cannot believe we failed a bully on this one. Um, but yeah, good job for this little mag um, base here because it really held up. And to be honest, this base alone, I think, won the war for them. So congrats, TD. Uh, nice try, 2.0. Uh, always, always, always hurts. In fact, this potluck, we had um, the only 2.0 clan that was not in the potluck was Invicta. So we had 2.0, Swarm, and Venom all search for the uh, all search for the potluck. Uh, 2.0 and Swarm both lost by percentage, and Venom lost by one star. So uh, tough, tough, tough midweek uh, potluck spin for the 2.0 family. But oh well, we'll bounce back. Uh, I know we're in arranged matchups right now. Um, 2.0 is matched up against the Dark Looters, and Invicta is matched up against Midwinter. So uh, both are going kind of interesting, going to come down to the end, I believe. Uh, and stay tuned for those recaps. Anyhow, guys, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help it bag that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.